Welcome to Winning in the Professional Sport of Sales. I'm Gary Millett. This is the overview of how we have organized this course around sports analogies that will be easy for each of us to remember. I should point out for the viewer that you don't need to take notes on this now. You will see each of these again in later coursework. I've defined 10 things that you have to be able to do well to be successful in sales and that you have to work on continually if you want to be a world-class sales athlete. Each of these is made up of knowledge, skills, and frankly, attitudes, all of which you will learn to master in this coursework. So here they are, and to make the list easier to organize in your mind, we've organized them by pregame, first half, and second half. First, the pregame steps. Number one, be ready to engage in the game. Know your client so you know what you're up against. Just as it would be unthinkable to go into a game without scouting the opponent, you need to understand your client and their business before you make the first contact. Number two, have a call objective that says you have an important reason why you're making that call. Number three, understand how to be in the zone. In this section, we'll learn the science of mental focus and dissipating and not being afraid to lose. Now for the first half of the game. You may do these again in the second half, but if you don't do them effectively in the first half of the game, you could lose the game. Number four, understand how to call your own plays, creating an opening statement. Number five, read the opposition to know if your plan is working, and if not, how to and when to call an audible in order to call a new play on the fly, the meet stage, and active listening. Number six, why and the importance of the single question mark, the skills we never practice. Number seven, proactive play design and reactive adjustments, building your future income. Now we get to the second half. Number eight, when to go for it and when the odds are you need to punt and play defense, the skillful act of listening and knowing when it's time to recommend a solution in the apply stage. Number nine, why ask for a sale if you don't know if they'll say yes? The truth about asking for something versus having the confidence to make statements that you know already have been agreed upon. Convincing is not selling. In fact, convincing is chasing the sale. Number 10, know that your deal will close and why. The science of forecasting, the win. Before we get into the pregame training, I want to talk for a minute about traditional sales training so people can get a good feel for how this is different. First off, let's discuss what training is not. Training is not a seminar. It is not a course. Training is not a hired motivational speaker who gets us fired up with tips and funny stories and fun stories. Training is not a lecture or an informational session. And finally, training is not a chance for your sales manager to, cor to correct the mistakes you've made in the past. Let me go right to the dictionary now. As defined in the dictionary, training is the process of bringing a person's skill and technique up to an agreed upon standard of proficiency by practice and instruction. The difference between this training and what people really think training is, is simple. We're going to train just as the dictionary defines training. I spent an entire year with sales teams and over a thousand hours of listening to recorded calls to learn what skills and techniques are required to win sales. I have defined these skills and techniques for this training. No one can be proficient with one course or a few sessions without practice. We've put together five courses that will require everyone to think, practice, and go through a process for as little as 15 to 20 minutes a day. You'll be mentored, and you will be giving constant feedback along the way. As you master each skill, you'll be able to use these skills right away in real life. I know how most salespeople feel about traditional training. Most of the salespeople I know want to learn more. They enjoy learning, but either don't believe that they have time to take away from selling, or simply don't know what skills are necessary to be great. We do know that even the best sometimes think that if they train too much, they may lose that magic that they once possessed. There's no magic in selling. Yes, some people are great at selling and others are not. The same is true in sports. If you're great, when you're done with this, you'll be even better than you are now. 